loud. You're noisy. Good morning. Good morning. Guess who's not hangry anymore? <laughs> this guy. Yeah. Gonna smoke us out over there, lady. We're just having a a lazy morning. Just kind of regrouping from the last several days of Yeah, it's craziness. been a couple days for sure. And everything for my procedure checked out great. Everything's mm -hmm. good there. So um that's good news because that means I don't have to do it again for like seven years. So happy about that. Yay. Um yeah, that was rough. That was a lot rougher. The procedure itself wasn't bad. It's Hangry just the whole... is real, y'all. Let me tell you. Oh, I was not happy about not being able to eat. And <laughs> just your energy levels go down because you don't have the nutrients. You don't have this. And then on top of it, the well decides to give us issues. Yeah. Which... I'm pretty sure the well pump itself is fine, but we've got to change everything else out, which is something that we've known for a while. Yeah, we've talked about it before. Yeah. And we've been putting it off just because we're like, well, we can go that one more day. Oh, just one more day. Oh, hey, guess what? We ran out of one more days. Yeah, so, and of course it has to happen when he's having a procedure. So it's not something that we could fix like right away. Oh. Yeah. So, um, we've, but, been, we've been without water for two days. You're over smoking your pan. It's fine. I got it on low, but it's, yeah. um, yeah, it's been a couple days, which I mean, we've had bottled water and all that kind of stuff, but not any running, running water. Um, oh, it's a double yoker. So, it's give me yogurt. one sec. But, uh, so I washed my hair this morning with premium filtered water. But it feels so soft. I mean, I knew our water was hard. When I did the Ew. water testing, um, you want outside? it was extremely hard. The water was beautiful on all the tests. No issues with the water whatsoever, but it was extremely hard, like off the charts hard. You don't realize it until you wash your hair with like not hard water. And yeah, was able to wash my face and my hair and you know, do the whole sponge bath or what y'all call yeah. and I don't know. But um, yeah, so I think I wanna try to get that, um, we do have a softener, I wanna try to get that incorporated in with this big repair replacement issue um but we are going with a a bigger pressure tank which i knew i wanted to do from the get-go but i wasn't gonna just change it to change it it was kind of hey it ain't broke don't fix it which a lot of you understand and i appreciate that but now it's broke and now we gotta fix it Babe, can I have some of that <clears throat> orange juice? Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're just, we're getting a slow start, guys, and which means it's going to get out to you a little later, but you don't mind, do you? I don't think you do. Yeah, because the other thing is I didn't get a video out yesterday, which I think everyone would understand. I mean, I was at the hospital taking care of my husband, so um, wasn't quite primed for editing. And that's okay. Yeah. So typically, yeah, today being... Is today Tuesday? No, no, babe. Today's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. We're way behind in getting videos out. Holy I know. Um, we'll get one out, guys. We, we've got stuff. She's got stuff queued up, ready to go, but... Just putting it all together yeah. and all that. And then this will be the challenge. I know we talked about it a little bit before was, you know, with our channel growth, but then also our homestead growing, you know, the time management's going to really kick in and we've just got to work out a good system. But the nice part with kind of what we're doing right now is we're also thinking of the future where 
when it's not one of those that we need to build a new structure, we need to, you know, have a new animal pen, you know, once we have those things established and then it's just maintenance, it won't be as bad, but we've, we've got some really big stuff coming up guys. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. excited to, I want the studio done cause I'm excited to start working on the prep for the shop. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's gonna be really and cool. My intentions because today is gonna be a, a gorgeous day. And tomorrow, not so much. No. Um, and we got new chicks on the way. Mm-hmm. So I was hoping today to be running on the mill, but that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna get the water stuff situated. We did stop after my procedure you're noisy I'm trying to talk to the I'm people trying to cook you breakfast quiet down my breakfast. um we stopped at home depot yes home depot yesterday and got the new pressure tank and all the fittings and the new control box because honestly the I mean, the pressure tank isn't holding pressure, so it's causing the well pump to short cycle. The well pump itself is good, and but it was the pressure tank. But because of its short cycling, <clears throat> it's ruined the control box that has the condenser in it. Um, I had to use the original condenser. Um, Cause shocker, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and they don't sell just the condenser. You have to spend the almost $90 for a whole new control box. When all you need is, and they're like, well, if you order, what, that doesn't fix it right now. So they're always out to get you somehow, right? They, they want you to pay more for a whole assembly. I mean, we're, that's today's, you know, throw away. Yeah. The throwaway society of today where you buy something and instead of being able to repair or fix it because it's going to cause one it's a matter of parts availability can you get the parts for that but then a lot of times if you order the individual parts it's more expensive than if you just replace the entire item you know uh, uh, printers nowadays like it's cheaper to just go buy a whole brand new printer for your computer than it is the ink cartridges to refill them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why would you do such a thing? Um, I know like for you automotive guys, you can buy an entire wheel hub assembly already with the bearings and everything in it cheaper than you can for just one set of bearings, which could be for the better, I guess, in some aspects, you know, a lot of times you're like, oh, I'll just change the outer bearing or the inner bearing, which the inners are the ones that normally go out. And, but then a little while later, now you got an outer bearing issue or, or vice versa. So to change the whole thing, isn't necessarily too horrible, but it's just ridiculous. of the fact that I should be able to change a condenser on a unit of something or a bearing on something instead of having to replace the whole dumb thing. A lot uh, of us women are over here hearing, wah, 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 you know, well, like the old peanuts cartoon. Yeah. Because, yeah. But he would be doing the same thing if I was talking about cooking or. Right. Know. I mean, there's, you know, she gets talking medical stuff and I'm just like, mm hmm, sure. Oh, y'all. It's so awful when I have to go in because they put in his IV yesterday. I don't, I mean, he's got good veins. I've admired his veins. And as a nurse, you just love seeing those good veins going, oh, I, I'd like to pop that vein. You hear it, hear it. She's a man. She wants to stab me, folks. <laughs> but yeah, it it definitely makes me miss the nursing field when I'm in a environment like that. But I don't miss healthcare, if that makes sense. The healthcare industry. I miss nursing. I don't miss healthcare industry. But you know, it's just it's just been a a rough couple days, you know, uh, with you know ever having everything going on and. You know what they say when you when you make plans, God laughs. So you just have to roll with it. Um, there's a lot of responsibilities anytime you have a homestead, uh, and well, in, in life in general, 
it, you don't even have to have a homestead. And you could be going along normal in your life and you don't plan for certain things to happen. And then when they do, you have to readjust and refocus your energies onto whatever it is that's causing an issue. Excuse me. So that's kind of where we've been at this week. And it also dawned on me that, well, it shouldn't have dawned on me, but like we come back from our vacation, we hit the ground running and, um, we didn't stop until our bodies were like, yeah. And like right before we were getting ready for his procedure for like a day and a half before that, we both felt crappy. I'm not talking sick crappy. I'm talking fatigue, muscle aches, not in a flu way either, but it just our body saying enough is enough. You're exhausted. Stop. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's weird because, you know, typically, like, when we were up north, and we're still transitioning to, you know, being down south again, um, is, you know, in the wintertime, you're not out doing a whole lot, really. You're you're mm -hmm. really a very sedimentary lifestyle. Um, and then it's like spring comes out, everything's going, and then you're like, ooh, back to the rush and work off that winter weight. And But we've, we've stayed pretty mm -hmm. busy, which... It was what we wanted. Right. And, and that was mm -hmm. the whole point and reason of moving south instead of staying up in Michigan was we could, albeit cold or nasty on some days, but we could be out working pretty much every day of the year. Mm -hmm. And and that was a big thing for us was staying, you know, that active lifestyle. And we've talked about it a bunch before, but... You know, with our mentality of the homestead of aging in place, like we want to be here for the rest of our lives and we want it to be something that we can manage and maintain that whole time. But also in order to live a longer, fuller life, you need to stay active. Mm -hmm. um, the minute that you end up sitting around and just holding down a couch or a chair or, you know, putting yourself homebound or anything like that because you're bored. And then that leads into, you know, a lot of times, honestly, it leads into the depression, which then you're depressed because now you're depressed because you're not out doing anything, but you've sat there not doing anything for so long. So it just, it snowballs, guys. And the whole key is staying more active. Well, you experienced that in 2020 because, you know, with all the lockdowns and stuff, you know, I, I still had to work. In fact, my hours increased as a nurse, but... He came to Ohio and we weathered it together in Ohio. And uh, yeah, for six weeks, you really didn't leave Jenna's house. No, because you, you couldn't go anywhere. And we were, you know, the house was in a park, so there really wasn't much to do. Mm -hmm. um, there, you know, we had a few little projects in the house that we had done up, but the house was pretty much finished for what we needed and there was nothing for me to do i couldn't go nowhere everything was locked down like you were just stuck and um you know and it's it's funny because um uh, right after i i retired um and right at my retirement date it was probably the heaviest that i had been and you know because even though yes i was in the marine corps but I was in a schoolhouse environment stuck behind a desk and so it was a very just low physical activity kind of job at the time. So I was the heaviest I'd ever been and then I retired and I moved back home and went back out to the family farm. It was like baling hay and then I was working at the youth camp so I was out back to doing physical labor every single day. And it felt great. Oh, I was loving it. But I lost like 25 pounds right yeah, away. Yeah, he was really, really thin when we met. And I went, it was probably six, seven months after I retired. Another Marine buddy had, was retiring. And so I went back down to Georgia for his retirement. And everyone's like, holy crap, where's the rest of you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, well, you, you retire from the Marine Corps, then you find the gym. And I'm like, I... No, I still don't know where the gym is and I have no intention of finding a gym, but that everyday life was keeping me more healthy and more active and my eating habits still weren't the greatest. So that probably didn't help much, but 
you know, now, like, being able to kind of have that culmination of all of it, and it's much, much better. And it, it was proof that, hey, if you're, if you're just sitting around and putting nothing but junk in your body and not being active, then your body's going to show the results of that. But there's also a flip side to that, too, you know. I eat better now um, oh. than when I was actively nursing. Uh, as many of you know, I'm sure all y'all know, a nurse, um, you're on your feet 12, 14, 16 hour days. You don't have time to go to the bathroom. You don't have time to eat. You don't have time for anything during your shift. You are that busy. And uh, I would find myself uh, going my full 12, 14, 16 hour shifts not eating. Or I would pack some cheese and sausage and I might snack on that in between whatever opportunity I got. And then by the time I got home, I was so ravagingly hungry that I would just mow. I mean, I could keep pace with him. I'd eat half pizza. We'd order a large pizza. I mean, I could scarf half of it because I was so hungry. Um, and it, it really isn't a viable. And I, I was it's severely not hydrated because, you know, they went through that whole nurses can't have water or coffee at their workstation. Um, you know, they want us to take care of ourselves, but then they, your environment's not conducive to do so. And so I was severely, severely dehydrated, um, never drinking enough. And, and I can really tell a difference now that we're not, or I'm not in that kind of environment where we can stop and we can take a, you know, half hour break and, and being able to drink something all day long, uh, to keep ourselves hydrated. I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a completely different I mean, you think as nurses that you're supposed to be healthy, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. Uh, but in reality, you can't. I was walking uh, miles upon miles upon miles every day, but not in a healthy way. I'm much more healthier now. So. Oh, for sure. And, and, and I, I mean, we both, we talk about it all the time. And it's, it's one of those that we just, we feel so much better and, and I think there's a lot of it in the fact that we, you know, you guys just seen, I mean, she made breakfast and that's, you know, two to three meals a day. I mean, the summer months, we kind of cut back to more of a two meal. Well, that's just because it's so hot. Well, right. And, and I mean, yeah. I typically have always been one that when it's really, really hot, I don't eat much because it's just too hot to eat. Or that's eat. where we go to the garden and we pick a salad. Yeah. Or typically when, when we're working the garden... I'm snacking on cherry tomatoes. Oh, that looks like a good cucumber, you know, and we're eating a lot of that good food. Yeah. And, uh, or but the, the days are getting longer now, guys. Like that's, you know, I mean, it's, it's slowly but surely getting that way, but now it's noticeably different to where, mm -hmm. all right, you know, you're able to be out a lot more, which we've been excited for. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad to have this procedure done. So that I don't have to do anything else that's going to slow me down. Um, excited for today because I've been wanting to get this well pump stuff done. Mm. And, you know, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be in like the mid-70s. Um, the sun is out already. I still don't see any clouds. Like, I'm just, I'm itching. Um, but we needed to make sure to get some breakfast in us. And yep. uh, we wanted to sit out and have a chat with you guys and make sure we got that out because like you said the the main channel we're a little behind on getting a video out but it's that long that long format content um you know since we've not been active the last couple of days if i sit for a long period of time my legs hurt uh i feel better like i i sometimes just want to go to walmart just to walk and then he can't keep up with me because i'm power walking through the store um you know but and that's going to be the benefit of the Same studio now. is we're going to be able to have, you know, ergonomic like office chairs yeah. that we can sit in and be a lot more comfortable, not at a wobbly card table. A cheap card table, yeah. You know, our temporary kitchen table right now. So as much as we love the bar, it'll be nice to actually have a table 
um, that we can sit down at and eat at. You know, we do this, but there's always shuffling this, shuffling that. Yeah. You know, and uh, we're looking forward to that. And we're not at short supply. We have so many projects. I know we say that a lot. I'll probably quit saying that. But, yeah. So, we're excited for getting water. I'll be excited because it should stop the pulsating water to where the on-demand water heater should be able to just go whoosh. And I can just stand there and take a super long, long shower and not have it go cold, hot, cold, hot, yeah. Cold, hot. Yeah, I mean, we're loving this on-demand hot water heater because it does give you the endless water. But we found, and I, uh, we noticed when I put air in that bladder tank the last time, trying to see if that would help maintain, and it worked for a couple weeks. Yeah. It, it did, and then it went back to the pulsing, which the pulsing is just from the well pump kicking in and out, which well, is not good on the well pump, and I'm... Yeah. I'm not I'm not at a point where I want to deal with pulling the well pump because honestly guys we don't know how deep our well is they there was no documentation no records. or records of that well being dug and so and it doesn't have a removable cap they welded a piece of metal on top and I've been wanting to cut that off and put but I'm like no don't do it because don't touch it yeah. If it's working, don't touch it. And, and so, I think as things develop a little bit more and we get into a little bit better place that we yeah. can afford to go maybe a day or two, then I do want to pull it. Because one, I'm curious to how deep it is. But, you know, we're getting, I mean, just great, pure, clean oh, water yeah, out of it. Beautiful. So, I, I'm not wanting to mess with it. But I know at some point, you know, there is a lifespan mm. of those well pumps. And... Uh, well, upgrade is needed. Yeah. We're just, we're grateful to already have the well. Uh, that was here on the property, We even though we didn't know anything about it, but uh, still grateful to have it. Although I've really been kicking myself in the butt the last two days, not having running water or any water, period, that I have everything it takes to set up for a gray water reuse. <laughs> or not gray water reuse, uh, rainwater catchment. I have it all. We have the tanks. I know that we've picked up gutters at rain or at thrift shops. Yeah. We could easily, even if we just pulled off of just the kitchen area, I could have had a full IBC tote full of water that we could have employed. Yeah. It's just kind of one of those things you take your water for granted and and yeah. So um, well, and those systems are gonna develop as we go along. I mean, it's it's one of those just like this well situation. We knew, and it's like, hey, it ain't broke, don't fix it, don't. Um, but trying to put those other things, and that's that's just part of, one, it's part of our impatience, is we want it now, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, we do fall into that category of people that we talk about all the time. Of, yeah, we're want it now people. You know, want it now, want it now. But we do, I mean, we're reasonable enough to understand that it's going to take time. You know, we're still just barely over a year here on the homestead, still building the initial infrastructure stuff. And, you know, when you look at a, a typical situation of someone buying, you know, a homestead or a farm or whatever, a lot of times, it, nowadays, not so much. People are doing more buy raw land, start from the ground up. But, it's uh, not a you process. know, in the previous decades, it's always been you bought something that was pretty much turnkey and then you made modifications, you know, but you already had a home that was established. You already had. And so being able to do it does make things a little bit slower. But like I said, it's it's exciting because now we're we're at a point where things are like they're getting really permanent yeah. and it's getting real to where, OK, now now we can start even implementing maybe some of the beautification stuff every once in a while um and and just really tweaking what we have and making it more efficient and more effective for us yeah i mean my biggest concern with where we're going to be moving the the garden to is is it big enough like that's that's my he he believes it is going to be big enough once we remove everything out of that area. I think so. with with the exception of maybe, honestly, the only thing that I can see that it wouldn't be enough room for 
is if we decided, which is something that we did, we tried last year and it went a little ways and then the deer ate it. Oh, um, my corn. Was like corn, right? We need a larger area probably to, you know, if What's we wanted... What's those raised beds for? If we wanted to grow a significant amount of corn, um... You know, which we don't typically eat a lot of anyways. Like, and I love sweet corn. Yeah, and I, I used to eat a lot of corn. That was like my main primary vegetable, but it was easy because it was in a can and, you know, previous to being able to do this homestead stuff, it was whatever you bought from the store and it was always, you know, mashed. And I'm, I'm really picky about my sweet corn because when, um, when I was working my way through nursing school, uh, of course, I had my summers off from bus driving and the boys started working down um, at Stephen Jean and Nye's uh, corn farm. And they do a gourmet sweet corn that is just phenomenal. And um, since I had my summers off, uh, I typically would work four to five jobs <laughs> during that summertime I was off from school bus driving. And I would started working down at the corn farm. Uh, sometimes I would be in the field, sometimes I would man the booths. And I had my own booth, you know, in Fort Wayne, and I would get to, uh, you know, people would drive by and see me eating a raw ear of corn. That's how you know you got a good corn, is you can shuck it right there and just take a bite out of it. And he didn't believe me until I, I showed him and made him do it. And it it's, I'm very picky on my sweet corn. And I, every time we go up, if I can get my hands on some, uh, of uh, Aunt Gina's corn, I'm I'm gonna do it. But I am picky, and peaches and cream is is probably one of my favorites. But uh, so I do have some of that planted, and I love it for just eating it. I'll that'll be my garden snack. Literally pull it, shuck it, eat it. And God forbid, quit boiling your corn for more than two minutes, y'all. You shouldn't need to boil your corn more than two minutes. You shouldn't need to add sugar or milk or anything else to your corn water to boil it if it is a good corn. Please only boil it enough to get it hot because... Can you, can you see you might have hit a nerve? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I'll go somewhere like a cookout or whatever and people like boil the crap out of the corn and then you go to chew it and you're like... And it's like that tough, it, it, it doesn't burst, it's just bleh. Yeah, please don't overboil your corn. No, oh, you're a hot mess. <laughs> you're a PSA for today. That's, that's probably the only thing that I could see in the future that we would need bigger than the area that we're planning on putting it, honestly. Mm -hmm. Because for me, looking at it, it's kind of a self-restraint thing too. Is, you know, our primary concern is feeding the two of us. Mm. Granted, you know, Jake and Jenna are here, and Jake doesn't eat so much of, of our stuff, but Jenna does. And, you know, but even then, they're not eating a lot, no. you know, like that two extra miles. They take and, care of the leftovers. And we're able to preserve. So it's, it's one of those that you need to grow enough to sustain yourself and to have a little bit of extra just in case mm. or to be able to, you know, help your neighbor or something like that. And we're at that point. I, I think the size of the garden and what we're able to accomplish with... So what he's saying is he thinks I need to scale back my garden, but he's saying it in a nice way. Yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> I, we, there's no need for two people to have 306 tomato plants. I'm just saying. There might be a little PTSD from that. That was a Do lot of tomatoes. Do you know how many items I make out of tomatoes? Yeah, and I also know how many jars that there's going to be four buildings and all they're going to be full of is tomato products. But it, it, in that, there's worse things that happen, guys, though, really. They're, you know, like, I love the fact that we do have that. But I, there's also the reality that we don't have the space system. when it comes harvest season or even just the daily maintenance of the plants, you know, we have to spread our time out because it's, you know, we're still building projects, mm -hmm. right? And but we're also we're we have animals that need maintenance, and you know, right now like they're pretty low maintenance. You know, hey, feed them, you know, once a day, and you know, make sure they're safe and things are taken care of. But you know, with the goats, the whole point of the goats was coming in. Well, there's an added chore right there because mm -hmm. now we're gonna start milking them soon, and. You know, so now you've got the milk that you've got to gather every day. You've got to be able to preserve it or turn it into whatever you're going to turn into. Um, and then, you know, 
knowing the future of like the hogs coming in and clearing those areas and mm -hmm. once everything's established then general maintenance stuff is pretty good to go but the garden like even the size that we had last year we didn't even give it near enough attention he was really shocked at that's a full-time job in itself like don't worry about anything else just get up go straight to the garden from sun up to sundown and you still haven't finished everything but that's what you could finish that day mm -hmm. and then it's wash rinse repeat the next day like holy man like how do you get anything else done so in my selfishness of trying to keep my wife helping me build projects i need her to scale the garden down just a touch so that maybe i could get a little bit of help on other projects but i i, I love the too. fact that it's there and you know it just it's a little something it's fun to get her blood boiling over it but um i love that we have the garden and you know it, i'm learning more and more about the garden stuff because I, i've dabbled a little bit but never like grew my own plants i've always helped other people with their gardens and that kind of thing but you, when you start having to hey this leaf is wilting what do you need to do to it and so you know trying to figure those things out is pretty cool but yeah he was real surprised at yeah. the amount of work uh that it that it would take i mean in the, the corn thing like yes i do want a lot of corn um you know there was one summer that uh steve had uh tried a new um strain of or new variety of corn and they are gourmet sweet corn uh sellers so it wasn't up to par for him but it was still amazing sweet corn so he gave me the field gave me the field the entire field so me and my kids went of course we got to borrow the burlap sacks and stuff and we harvested and harvested and harvested uh all of the corn that we could possibly fortunately we live close by so it was just right down the road and then i spent a good week and a half um blanching it cutting it off and freezing it y'all i had a chest freezer full of frozen corn for free just our work and it was amazing so that was something that i never really had to grow uh down on my homestead was because i knew that my connections with the nice uh provided us sweet corn and also the boys got to bring home the the off casts you know of the corn and the hogs loved it so i was able to feed out several hogs on the seconds of the sweet corn and all of that they were good hogs but it's just reusing and utilizing what you have available and shoot if someone's going to give you a field of sweet corn you best darn well be taking care of it and i didn't have to buy corn for probably a year but as a single mom it, it was definitely worth it so i look at it from a different perspective uh for me um food scarcity w is a real thing growing up i was extremely poor so uh food was something that was very scarce and not that i'm a food hoarder but i like to have enough prepared and if i can do that through the garden or through things that are gifted to us you're gonna bet your booty I c i'm gonna do it um because there may come a time six months from now our situation may change or the world situation may change or you just never know and so i have no qualms about putting back food um i know he does but he well i don't but i just I, there's also i i guess it's one of those that it, it needs to be within reason and i understand and we've had a lot of conversations about you know like her the food nervousness and you know the way that she had grew up and even as an adult trying to raise the children and stuff like there wasn't a guaranteed meal on the, on the mm -hmm. table every day and so she had to figure that out and and I respect that and and I understand it you know to where and that's where like our two lives growing up were were different mm -hmm. and you know I I didn't necessarily have to worry about that um at, at all times and it wasn't a, a necessity for us to have a garden and that kind of thing. And, and that's what I love about learning this stuff now, but it's one of those that sometimes her fear of the past or, you know, her, her fear from the past has made her kind of go a little overboard, you know, almost like an overcompensation of, Hey, I didn't have this before. So now I want a lot of it. And it's one of those that, 
things go to waste. And that's what I don't want to see is our time, energy, and effort going into something. And then it, it, it we don't benefit from it because we didn't have time or we didn't have the mm -hmm. space or we didn't have, you know, some way of preserving it. And, and that's where, you know, like neither one of us know how to cook for two people. Uh, and, and, you know, we've even have to work on something like that of how do you cook for just two people when you're used to cooking for, you know, six to okay. 10 people, yeah. you know, for every single meal. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's the little things that go through that. And, you know, we're, we're luckily in a really good place now that we're able to, we're able to pull a little extra, which is good, but I don't want to go to an extreme. Well, no, but the, you know, the beauty in having the hogs and the chickens is nothing truly does go to waste. Uh, we've scaled back from saving kitchen scraps for a hot minute during the move and during all that. But um, even if it doesn't get eaten as a leftover, um, you can feed that back to your animals and, yeah. or feed it to your compost pile. So it's that ever evolving circle of life. And... Um, yeah, I don't. I don't want to grow things that. That's why I'm not doing summer squash. Uh, we we didn't need it. Yeah. I I don't particularly care for it. So and I, and I do zucchini, like it, but, but it's yeah. one of those that I've ate it when other people have prepared it, mm -hmm. and they know what they're doing with it, and and I think eventually we will figure out a way of maybe growing it and eating it because it grew really well. Yeah, it grew well, mm -hmm. but we just. But the whole point yeah. too, and if you're if you're just getting into gardening or wanting to do this, like start with just a few plants mm -hmm. of things that you know you're going to eat. There's no point, you know. We we talk to a lot of the other homesteaders, and they'll grow things, and we're like, "What is that?" Or why are you growing that? But it's stuff that they're eating. You know, and, and, you know, like Eric and Missy will grow things that they don't eat, but they're also selling for market. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so in that instance, then it makes sense. Hey, grow some of whatever this I've is. I've never grown okra because I don't like it, but he does. So I've got to learn how to grow okra. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's tailoring your homestead to, um, your homesteads are always going to reflect your past experiences. Uh, whether it's feast or famine, uh, your homesteads are always going to reflect your desires to be more sustainable. Uh, and I think that's applicable in all parts of your life. Right. Uh, I don't, I think the only thing that I'll probably not ever get a chance to do here on this particular homestead is grow our own wheat and hay. Because we just don't have pasture land on our property. Yeah. There's... So I think, you know, so I won't be grinding my own flour and stuff like that. But, you know, anywhere where I can save money, anywhere where I can do it myself or ourselves, I'm all for that. Absolutely, 100%. So, what an interesting turn of events this coffee chat took. Just. Hey, there's a whole lot that happens when I got food feeling in my brain. <gasps> we just never know where it's going to take no. us. But, I mean, we talk like this anyway, and we'll sit there some days and be like, uh, how did we get so far removed from a Snickers bar to, uh, you know, move into uh, Portugal? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Our conversations just kind of, yeah, go go a little nutty. Our tracks run like a bowl of spaghetti. Yeah, they're they're ping, all over. Wah, just, wah. So... Yeah. But with that being said, guys, we've probably chatted enough this morning. We need to get out and enjoy this beautiful day. We got work to do. We need water. Got to get some water back on the homestead. Yeah. So we appreciate every one of you. Um, if you haven't already, hit that little subscribe and mm -hmm. give us a thumbs up if you like and enjoy what we're doing here. Oh, yeah. We're also finalizing the Name Your Goat contest. Or not contest, but, you know. Um so I'll check the community pages on the main uh, White Rock Homestead because uh, we've put it out to all the members. So if you're a member, go on there and vote for what you feel our goats should be named. Uh, super awesome submissions. Yeah. We're, we did choose and our what's favorites. The, so the plan is we're going to announce the actual names that were voted on on Thursday our live night, on Thursday. On our live. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Time to take the apron off and put on my tool belt. Let's get to work. Bye, guys.